Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 313 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and next week I will be announcing a tour, which is really exciting. This is going to be my first tour since the surgery that is actually going to happen. I'm going to go everywhere that I can. It's going to be uninterrupted. It's going to be incredibly it's amazing i can't wait i'm super excited for it if you uh want to be ready for it loosebeers.com slash gig list get on the mailing list we're doing a pre-sale for this we are hopefully going to get tickets uh, up on sale on pre-sale on tuesday and then general sale on thursday is the plan uh if that changes i will let you know on on instagram my other social media platforms but yeah super excited sign up to that i can't wait to hit the road again it's going to be it's going to be amazing. This time, uh, we're starting in January, so it's coming up really quick. That's like six weeks away. How exciting. So I want to see you there. Um, I've had a good week. It's been it's been good. Um, a lot of people are, are telling me that, that I either have too many camera angles or not enough camera angles in my YouTube videos, and I'm leaning towards not enough. Currently, we have three. I was thinking of strapping a GoPro to my head so you guys can get a POV of what I'm seeing when I'm shooting. Maybe that could be that could be good. We could get a, a camera that just films the dog. We certainly won't be getting a camera that films Keelan for the podcast. <laughs> uh, this is strictly a main channel enterprise. Um, I uh, I recently got exposed on oh, just like everybody else with my Spotify Wrapped. Okay, I got absolutely exposed. My Spotify Wrapped. Every time it comes around, it it just says, "Hey, man." You have autism because all I do is listen to the same 10 songs on repeat and then once a year I'll find one song and I play that thing to death. And that's exactly what happened this year and the last five. All right, this year I, I my top album was the, the first Coldplay album and I think that's been the top album for the last four years. I'm the top 1% of Coldplay listeners. Do you know how many... Coldplay listeners there are and I'm the top 1% and I'm going to be real I only play one of their albums <laughs> I don't listen to much of their other stuff so I am their, their top 1% of listeners and I'm just sitting there listening to their first album on repeat oh you got a new song cool play spies <laughs> but then I have one song that I pick a year it just comes to me and I go that's that's going to be my autistic fixation. I'm going to play that motherfucker on a loop for three hours every three days for an entire year. And that for me has been opened by Lambert. It's just a piano song. It's just some dude who came up with a sick riff on the piano. There's no lyrics. There's no other instruments. It's just some dude playing his piano. And I'm like, that's awesome. I reckon I'm going to listen to that for hours in a row on a loop. Not shuffle, not in a playlist, not the not the rest of his album, just that one song. That's it. While I'm walking, while I'm at the gym, while I'm editing, while I'm cleaning, while I'm sitting, staring at the wall, listening to the music. Sometimes I'll sing it in my own head. I've lost it. I've gone insane. But it is really cool to see uh, the Spearhead Sundays be on a bunch of people's wrapped as well, uh, especially considering... Uh, I think Wrapped stops counting, like your plays and everything stop counting or, at the end of October. Uh, so I think I, I think I only released like less than 20 episodes from the start of the year to the end of October. And I'm still like a lot of people's top podcasts, which really says a lot about how uh, autistic some of you guys are. Because that means, oh, well, Lewis has only released like 18 episodes this year. I'm going to listen to them on a loop. Mm. instead of finding a new podcast that's actually consistent that is made by someone in good health. <laughs> this podcast is actually quite big. I was looking at the statistics yesterday. It's yeah. huge. It's, it's almost, getting up there. Yeah, it's almost as big as it's ever been. Yeah, which is so cool. And it, it, it makes me so grateful and so thankful because it's because the podcast has really suffered the most, I think, uh, from, from my illness. Like whenever I was sick or whenever I couldn't do something, it was always the podcast that I would stop. I would always put Luke and Lewis ahead of it because we never missed an episode there. Uh, and I would always put my main channel videos and TikToks and touring and everything else in front of Spearhead Sundays uh, because it was just the, the one that... that 
took the most effort because you know talking for an hour it it takes a lot of mental energy i mean are we recording i hope so are you recording oh you are oh, i'm recording here see oh. it takes a lot of Sorry. mental energy i am not recording on my laptop though which is okay. maybe we should take a quick pause here because yeah, that'll and make do it that yeah edit. see how much mental energy this show takes <laughs> Fuck. good spot yeah, we're ready to go. And we're back. What I was saying is uh, I am super, super grateful and I'm super excited to just grow the show. I have always believed that this podcast could be like the biggest in the country. And at times it has been up there. Uh, that's getting harder and harder as podcasts get bigger and bigger. And this one stays the same size as it has been for the last five years. But uh, what's really exciting is, is yeah, the show is almost as big as it has ever been. We had a really big spike during COVID, but that was only for about a month and then I got sick and sad. <laughs> so I am just excited, man, to like grow this thing and uh, and have you guys support it and, and, and uh, just seeing everybody share the clips and tag me on their stories and like write nice comments or send me a message about the show. It's so special and, and it really does make me feel very grateful to be able to do this show because I haven't been able to do to do it how I wanted, how I want to do it since 2019 really was when it was the last time I was doing it properly and I was well enough to do it. So I uh, am really excited to see what 2024 brings. I really want to make this show the biggest and the best that it can be. And I think, you know, I'm well enough to do that. It's, it's now just up to, uh, you know, up to us to kind of spread the word and, and get it out there. And uh, you know, cause I, I feel like, man, I feel like, we're getting a lot of listeners now, but as many listeners as we have now, I reckon there's at least five times that amount that used to listen to the show and then just kind of fell off. So I think the more that we do it and the more consistent we are with it, the more clips come out, the funnier the show gets. I think all those people are going to come back. I really do think though, after seeing the, the profile picture of the show, I need to change that ASAP. I look like a corpse in the image that is the face of this show. I, my eyes are barely open. I look like I haven't eaten in months. And I look like, I literally, I'm, it looks like I'm falling asleep in the photo. I'm leaning over. It looks like I'm just about to collapse. And they, they, they took that photo just before I fell asleep and smashed my forehead on the floor. <laughs> so I do need to change it, but uh, that will come with time. Because here's the thing. I don't want to get nice photos done when I've got braces on, do I? All right, I got my new chin, but I've still got braces. Mm. I see my orthodontist uh, in on Friday, and I think they're going to give me a date for when they come off. Hopefully, if my if they're happy with my bite, um, which I haven't been wearing my rubber bands like I should be. I got sick of them, so I took them off, and I haven't worn them. Well, you have to wear a retainer when you get them off. I think so. Yeah, they they did. I asked that, and they said most likely. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody does have to wear a retainer. That I can do because you take that out when you wake up. Mm. That's no worries. But I film every day now, like every single day I film. So I was just like taking them off to film, and then I was like, oh, I'll put them on when I don't need to film. And then it's like, well, I need to eat, mm -hmm. so I'll take them off when I need to eat. And then there was no opportunity to put them back on except for when I go to bed. But when I go to bed, I was too tired, so I didn't put them on, and I just haven't worn them for like a month, which is probably very bad. But we'll see what they say next time I go in. They'll be like, have you been wearing your rubber bands? And I'll go, yes. Have you been flossing? Yes. You know, you, when you lie to your dentist. Have you been flossing? Yes. And then they and then they, they, then they floss you and they go, really? And you go, no. <laughs> I feel like everybody used to do that. I actually have started flossing. I've been using the, well, I can't floss because of the braces, but I got these little pick things and I do that. And uh, even though I have been doing that like very regularly, it's uh, it's amazing how much stuff is there, even when they're cleaned regularly. So you remember that first time you flossed, yeah. you know, when you're like 26 and you're like, oh, I should probably look after my teeth. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm an animal. I'm disgusting. I'm surprised I still have teeth inside my skull. What am I doing? <laughs> I remember one time I didn't brush my teeth. This was when I was really young. I was like 12. I didn't brush my teeth before going to the dentist. My mom told me that I should have done it. And she's like, you have to do it. I'm like, I don't, I don't know why. I just didn't want to brush my teeth that day. I was like, I don't want to. And then the dentist was like, hey, man, are you brushing your teeth? I'm like, yeah. And, and he goes, are you? And he just scrapes this shit off my teeth. And he goes, no, you're not. And I went, oh. And he goes, you're going to lose your teeth. And I went, oh. And I have been brushing my teeth ever since. <laughs> 
I bet that happens all the time where people just go in and they just fucking lie to their doctors. Apparently that happens a lot in therapy. Really? I was reading about it on Reddit of like, uh, uh, therapists, do, do your, do you ever feel like your clients are lying to you or something like that? And it was like all these people going all the time, people come in and lie. And then all these other people like, I go in and I lie to my therapist. I don't know why I do it. What a waste of money. That's like breaking your arm, going to the hospital and being like, oh, my, my arm's fine, but I've got a bit of a headache. <laughs> what are you paying for? Going in there to have a whinge, get your money's worth, I say. Mm. Um, so anyway, how was your Spotify wrapped? Embarrassing? Yeah, just 0.1% in Lime Cordial. Lime Cordial split ends and I think like some other indie surf rock band. I don't think that... Maybe teenage dads. I don't think you, like that anyone has a cool Spotify rap. Mm. I think a lot of noise is made around alternative music and, and real music taste and, and, and liking this and liking that. And then everyone gets their Spotify rap and it's just like Taylor Swift and Coldplay. Yeah. <laughs> like, and Drake. And it's like, that's it. Yeah, my, my rap, because I use Spotify, Apple Music and YouTube Music. What is wrong with you? Well, I use Apple Music for my HomePod. Okay. I use YouTube music for when I'm working at my computer. Uh-huh. And I use Spotify um, when I want higher quality music. Right. Because so YouTube music is really I, low so quality. Do you remember when I asked you what's wrong with you and then you just went off on a tangent about, <laughs> you're like, I use, I use three streaming services. And I said, what's wrong with you? And then you said, I use str three streaming services in a different way. My tax agent encouraged me to sign up to all three. Why? Because apparently it's tax deductible and it's better off in the long term. That's but what she said. I don't know if that's true because that that's sometimes true, but you are still spending the money. So it's like, unless it's bringing you underneath a tax bracket that you'd otherwise pass. Yeah. Is maybe, 60 bucks a month really doing that? It's more like, it's yeah, it's more than that, but. It's more than that. Yes, yeah, but YouTube music just raise their prices. That is true. I do pay, pay for YouTube premium, but that's because I use the, I like the video feature, no ads. Mm. You got, if you don't have YouTube premium, you got to do it. So much better. Oh, I just use an ad blocker. Hey, 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 hey. I like it when the people whose work I enjoy get paid. My rap has been the same since I was 19. Yeah, it's Lime really it's really splits. bad. You know, you, you like to you like to think like, you know, when you're younger and you're listening to lots of different music and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep up with with music as it comes out. I love music. You don't love music, you love three bands. Yeah. <laughs> and and if you're if you're twenty two and you find yourself gravitating to a few bands, that's it. That's all you're gonna listen to for the rest of your life, okay? I found that one Coldplay album when I was twenty three. I'm I'm almost 30 and and I know that I'm going to get lowered into my coffin while they go it's all yellow that's it like, and and then the kids are going to be like what the fuck is this band I realized the other day my three favorite bands are all from the same label Really that, that says a lot I think Yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah that 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 label has really niched down they know exactly who their target customer is and it's just Keelan. Yeah so you you're you're get you're making that label a lot of money in yes. residuals and merch I buy a lot of merch from them <laughs> Do you think the artist sees like who the number one is listener? I don't think you do. I think that because because I got a, I got a Spotify rap for as a podcaster and yeah. it told me like top countries and top demographics and and things like that. But no, it doesn't tell me that. I, I wish it would. Like uh, you would have to opt in like as a listener. Like mm. I would love I would love for Coldplay to know that I'm their guy. Yeah, because I was just thinking when we do like these podcasts, the same 15 or so people always comment and interact. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, oh, great. I love this person who's always listening. Yeah. But other times it's like, oh, stop You're commenting. Annoying. So yeah. I wonder if they kind of see the same thing. Like, oh, this person's number one again. Yeah. No, I don't think they do. Um, but I, I would imagine at least with the really popular ones, like their number one listener would be like a gym or a cafe or like a business that's open and always play. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, there's for sure, at least with like the, the more laid back, quieter music, all of their top listeners are just like the Le Fleur Cafe in Sydney or whatever. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, uh, speaking of me having incredibly basic and embarrassing taste, I just coincidentally, I bought tickets to Coldplay. Yeah. Or oh, sorry, did I say tickets? I bought ticket. I bought one ticket. 
I have been trying to get tickets to the Coldplay for fucking ages. I've never really uh, been like a live music person. I've never really done it. Uh, I, I always used to go to the Cursor uh, live music concerts and I, I, I still have. I went to his last one. But uh, I, I went as a ticket holder a few times and then I went at, like as a friend and I got to go backstage and I, uh, but since then I've never really liked live music. I saw Muse live in like 2012 and that might be like the last concert ticket that I bought mm. uh, that wasn't like a mate. Yeah. Um, but this time I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm seeing Coldplay live. And this is when they were doing one show in Perth and nothing else. So I, I waited in line. I lined up online. I didn't go anywhere. 80,000 people ahead of me in line. And I was like, there's no fucking way there are 80,000 people in Perth who have an internet connection, okay? I know for sure <laughs> that I'm competing with people in like the Philippines and shit like that. And you know what? I was. I checked on Twitter after I missed out on the fucking tickets and there's all these people in these like Asian nations going, oh, I missed out on tickets to Coldplay in Perth. They're not for you. Fuck off, we're full. <laughs> I'm talking about the arena, not the country. All right, come and visit, enjoy our, <laughs> enjoy our country and and the cultural delights that we have. But we're we're you know Marvel Stadium is full. All right, Marvel Stadiums for Australians. <laughs> the, and I say that you know hypocritically. I don't live in Perth, so I was gonna be, I was gonna fly to Perth to see Coldplay there. I'd probably get fucking king hit for for not having a sunburnt neck. You're not from here. You're from Melbourne. You don't smell like petrol and and mining. But I managed to get tickets to Melbourne. Okay, I I, I joined the queue and they they sold out four arenas in like twenty minutes what? while I was waiting there. And Marvel Stadium, what's the capacity on that? It's That's sixty. Sixty thousand. They sold out four of those things, and I think I believe four in Sydney as well. Must be the similar capacity. Could you? I couldn't imagine being that unbelievably famous. What's that guy's life like? He How can't are they leave still the house. relevant? I think that man. They've because they've just made the best album ever, and then after that, they made a few more. I haven't listened to them. Right. They're that famous because of me. Right. Because I just I just chuck on parachutes and just spin that motherfucker every time I have a shower and every time I go to bed. Um. I don't know. They they're good. They make great music. They're I but I also think their their live shows are just phenomenal. Like the Coldplay live shows, I see clips on it, and it's just in terms of bands, right? Uh, Coldplay is reaching like female pop star levels of show production. It's really only women that do this type of stuff. It's women and like Kiss, and that and Coldplay, and that's it. Taylor Swift does it. Katy Perry's done it. Madonna did it. Lady Gaga did it. Um, all of the female pop stars smash live shows uh, and then Coldplay's like, oh, why don't we try? Because I feel like with, with male um, singers and stuff, Michael Jackson did it and everyone else was like, oh, I don't want to try too hard. That's gay. You know, even Harry Styles, he's like, he has a live show, but it's not, it's not like an experience like the Taylor Swift show is or like, you know, like when you see a clip of the Harry Styles show, it's like him having an awkward interaction with a fan. When you see a clip from the Coldplay show, it looks like 40,000 people having the time of their fucking life, like an unbelievable experience. Even if you don't like Coldplay music, you look at it and you go, wow, those 40,000 people are having so much more fun than the 40,000 Harry Styles fans, right? And then the Taylor Swift fans are having way more fun than the Coldplay fans, right? Probably too much fun, okay? You see a, a Taylor Swift fan died yeah. at one of her concerts? 16-year-old. That's horrible. That's awful. What about Travis Scott, all right? We're not going to yell at her like we did Travis? Someone died at the Robbie Williams show the other night. The one you were at? The one before. Wow. The night before. What happened? Old. Yeah, old. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, 80. I'm trying to have a good night out. <clears throat> he shows his ass on stage. I think that's when she died. Yeah, that is that. Robbie Williams is great. I really like him. He's just like uh, someone. Uh, someone uh, accidentally gave like an angel's voice to just like some chav from England, and he's like, "Oi, oi, 
Mm. I love tits and I can sing. He's like, I love doing coke. Yeah. And my brother was next to me going, me too. Oh, he was saying that on stage. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> He's like 50 something. Yeah, you shouldn't, you tell, shouldn't love it anymore. Telling all these stories about how he used to get really high and drunk and all the yeah. mischievous things he used to get up to. Yeah. And my brother sitting there relating to everything he says. Yeah, you, you see if, uh, <laughs> but here's the thing, Robbie Williams is like 50 something, your brother's not. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I feel like once you, once you hit, once you hit 50, if your stories uh, aren't in the past tense, you're going to die soon. <laughs> But that's the thing, right? Robbie Williams, as good as a live performer as he is, if you're telling stories in your, in your show, you you know, mm. it's not an experience. I feel this is why comedy is so hard to to make live up to the arena. Like once you're in a fucking arena, and all you're doing is going, uh, so my dick, you know, it can it can feel a little bit like, oh, this doesn't fill the room. Uh, like I saw Kevin Hart in an arena and I'm not, I'm not the biggest Kevin Hart fan. I just wanted to, I'd never seen comedy in an arena and he had like screens behind him. And, and uh, like say, every, say he's telling a story and he's like, I was at my home and it was night. And then behind him, it'd be like a 3d animation of his home at night. It was really, really cool. Um, really interesting way of doing stand up, and, and definitely filled the arena. I don't know if it, if it, I don't know if it made it funnier, but it definitely was like a super cool experience. Um, but yeah, like, you know, when you're a comedian, you can't have fireworks and pyrotechnics going off and, mm. and a screen behind you play, like playing like music videos that are custom made for that show. You can't do that shit. But Coldplay can, you know, like, it, like I'm, I keep seeing clips of everyone, you know, they get their, their flashing light bracelet. And it, and it and it's like programmed to the music so that when the crescendo of the song hits, all the bracelets start going off with the pyrotechnics and the lights. That's amazing. I couldn't do that with like a dick joke, you know? Like I'm just I'm just I'm just telling it an, an embarrassing sex story and then I don't know, the wristband that you're that you're wearing that you got on the way in starts secreting fluid. I don't know. Like it wouldn't make it very much funnier. So anyway, I got tickets to Coldplay. I missed out on three of the shows and then I was like, fuck, I get to the final show that they added, like 15 minutes uh, they added it and then I finally get in, everything sold out. I had to buy one of the fucking VIP tickets. Really? Not the, the proper VIP, because the, cause the oh. proper ones were like $1,500, which is crazy. Do you even get to meet the band? No, you don't. I don't know why you would buy them. I will never do a VIP ticket where you don't get to meet me. I think that's gross. Fifteen hundred dollars for what? I think that I think that they're too big to meet. Like, let's be real. They have that much of a relentless touring schedule. They are too big and too famous and too busy to meet people. It is exhausting. Like meeting people, I love doing it, but it's fucking exhausting because it's so much social energy. If I had a touring schedule like them, which is like so, I don't know, they, it looks like they do like over 200 shows a year and they're all arenas uh, and they would be like physically exhausting. I wouldn't meet people either if I were them. You just don't have the energy for it and you've got to spend your energy wisely. But I certainly wouldn't be charging $1,500 for a ticket. Like I, I got the $400 one, right? Now, normal tickets were 175 400 it's fuck it's crazy expensive but also i haven't left the house for four years that's how i justified it um but all i get right double the ticket price all i get is early entry and then i think like a drink and stuff and i guess early entry is cool if you really want to be at the front but it's not 225 dollars cool um that said i am six foot eight i'm two meters tall I am going to be right up the front. I'm getting my $225 extra and you know and you know where I'm getting my $200 from? You. <laughs> I'm taking $200 worth of experience away from you. If you're stuck behind me at the Coldplay concert, enjoy the view of my back because I am not moving aside. All right? That's I, honestly, I reckon that's a big reason why I don't like going to live music because I feel so rude being there at all. If I'm at the front, 
No one can see, right? Everyone uh, up to like maybe halfway back, I'm in the way. And then if I'm at the back, I'm at the back. Can't really see anything. So like, I don't really enjoy them. But this time I'm gonna be right at the front of that motherfucker. I am, I'm gonna use every second of my early entry to position myself in the best, most obstructed view place for you. And you're going to be behind me. I'm going to wear a big t-shirt that says no. And when people tap me on the shoulder, go, can you move? I'm just going to point at the t-shirt like that. And it's going to, and I'm going to go, no. All right. If I, if I leave the Coldplay concert and I haven't been king here, I failed in my duties because I am going to be right. I'm going to be up. I'm going to be so close to the stage that Chris Evans or whatever his name is. Who's the singer? I don't even know the guy's name. It's definitely not Chris Evans. Chris Martin. Chris Martin. I got the Chris bit right. <laughs> me and Chris Martin are going to make eye contact and he's going to make a weird expression that's, that says to me, is that guy on a step ladder? <laughs> is this dude standing on his girlfriend's shoulders? That's another thing. Anyone who wants to get on my shoulders, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, so I'm going to be seven foot five. All right, it's going to be me and, and someone's girlfriend on my shoulders. I might get two of them up there. I might stack two girls on top of each other, put them on my shoulders and, and throw one of them at Chris. That'll be good. I, I went, can't wait. I went to a gig in Chicago last year and I got there really early, went right to the very front. Yeah. And like halfway through the show, someone behind me was like, can you move? I can't see. And I said, I've been here for two fucking hours. Yeah. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. It is such a it is such a weird thing because it's like i mean is that rude it's kind of rude but it's also like it's kind of not like nah, you're just you're just tall you're not doing it at them everyone paid the same price everyone paid the same price but there is also common decency though that's something to consider like i've considered that it would probably be quite rude for me to be out the front, but I've gone, nah, fuck you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Here's what I here's what I think of it. Okay. If girls can scream at the top of their lungs, all right, every fucking two minutes at nothing, piercing the ears of everyone around <laughs> them who just wants to listen to the show and not you screaming your fucking head off, I can be six foot eight in the front row. <laughs> and bob your head a little bit and 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 not not just bob my head i'm gonna be bouncing on my toes man <laughs> i'm gonna be, i'm gonna be bobbing up and down i'm gonna have a fucking boogie guess who's getting elbowed in the face everyone around me i'm gonna be going like this <laughs> you know any anyone five foot six and under around me is gonna be leaving with a bruise on their forehead you're gonna have a blood nose i'm treating this shit like my own personal mosh pit You know what it is? Me going to a concert is is someone who's 300 kilos buying one plane ticket. <laughs> it's like, you can do it, but it's disgusting and rude. And, and you deserve every look you get. And if someone elbows you in the gut, that's your fault. You know, if someone elbows me in the fucking hip, that's, that's my fault, I'll cop that, I understand. All right, but it's general admission, baby. I'm making the most of it. <laughs> Put a height limit in there. You know what they should mm. do? If you stand behind me, you should take a photo and show it to Ticket Tech and they should they should adjust your prices to those obstructed viewing tickets. <laughs> you know those tickets you get and you're behind like a fucking light stand, <laughs> it's obstructed view. You're like, oh, why is this ticket $80? You, you arrive at the show and you understand why. Or like us when we went to Andrew Schultz, we could barely see the stage. That's right. Yeah, Andrew Schultz was like, we we were right at the top up the back because he's, he's you know, me and him are such close friends that he got me good tickets. <laughs> no, we, we bought them, right? Because I, like, I do like buying tickets. But literally, if you're watching the video version, this was our view of him performing. Yes! Oh, oh my <laughs> God! Like it was like three quarters the back of his head. And then we couldn't, we so we could see him and that was, seeing him, that was all right. But... Only because there was like a giant LED panel on to, to the side of him that was kind of facing us. But that was for us who were on that side. <clears throat> there was one screen that was behind him. So if you were facing the front of the stage, you could see the screen. We could not see it at all. And I remember before he started, me and Keelan were both like, oh, I hope he doesn't put anything on that screen because <laughs> we won't be able to see it. Guess what he puts on the screen? <laughs> like the most important funny part of the night. <laughs> 
but did it was you, an incredible show. Did you tell him where we sat? <clears throat> no, I didn't. No. Um, but I did get a bunch of comments from people going, oh, you, you know, he couldn't get you better tickets. I don't like that. I don't like asking for tickets. If, if you can buy them, you know, purchase them. Mm. I get that all the time. Hey, man, can me and my 17 friends have tickets? Yeah, man, you can. I sent them the link. I got no shame. <laughs> hey, man, are you, are you performing? Yeah, I am. And I send them the ticket link. Because before they even ask, because what they want to do is they, they go, they, they, this is what they want. Hey, man, are you performing tonight? Yeah, man, I'll get you in. How, do, you need, do you need six plus ones? Do you need a, do you need a plus 12? Instead, of, instead, I go, yeah, man, and then I send them the ticket link. I don't even say buy tickets. I just go, yeah, man, link. If, do you think we'd ever get to a point if I stopped working with you where you'd make me start buying tickets? Well, I was, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about with this tour coming up. Mm. Um, because you don't get paid here, yeah. you're not really an employee. You're just like a mate and, and friends support friends. So right. I do expect you. Okay. So if I'm working at your shows, I still have to pay. For the privilege of working for me. Yes. Okay. But also to, you got to pay for the ticket too. Yeah. Cause it's cool to come backstage. <laughs> right? Like everyone really thinks it's cool to come backstage. So like, you know. Uh, Coldplay, they're charging $1,500 to get early entry and you get a T-shirt. And you know what really made me laugh? I was actually looking at their tickets, just laughing at some of the prices of them and just look at what they get. And there's like, you know, you get your entry, you get early entry, you get a drink, whatever. And then they go, <clears throat> uh, a special uh, sustainable piece of merch. What does that mean? You, you get a you get a fucking enclosure for a sea turtle. You can cast it out to sea, and it becomes a sustainable habitat for sea turtles instead of just you know like a like one of those plastic rings surrounded coke cans. I don't think so. All right, there's no. I'll I'll be real. There's no such thing as sustainable merchandise. What does that mean? Mm. A biodegradable wristband. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that I think that charging. I have done it before and it kind of felt yucky. I've charged for VIP meet and greet and uh, it was like my, it was my, I was working with management at the time. I, I no longer do. I do everything myself now. And that uh, was their idea. And I made a lot more money. Like you make a lot more money by doing those, but I just felt like, oh man, I would just much rather just meet people for free until I'm like, until the shows are too big to do that. I think what I would do is because at some point, you know, once the shows are over 500 people, you can't meet everyone. You uh, you just can't. It's not physically possible. It's not safe. You got to worry about crash and stuff. I think what I would do is once the shows are to at hopefully at the size where it's too big to just meet everyone, um, I would charge like extra to do a VIP ticket where you do get to meet me, but I would just like charge extra for merch and then limit it to like a hundred people or whatever. And then after the show, those hundred people, they get their t-shirt and it's first come first serve. And it's just like the cost of the t-shirt or the poster or whatever extra thing that you're selling. And that way I make a little bit extra money. They get a t-shirt, they're not ripped off. And, and at least some people get to meet me. I think that's how I would do it. Cause I don't know, there was just something very gross about charging double the ticket price. Cause that's what we did charging double the ticket price and then they get to come backstage and you're like, yeah, so this is the toilet. <laughs> That's the, the couch that's dirty. And um, this is sound check. Now shoo, get out of here. I'll get your money. Um, but yeah, anything for Chris Martin, baby. I can't believe I fucking paid. The, I can't, but you know what? I'm going by myself and I got bullied for that online. And I'll say this, if you think it's, uh, it's lame to see someone buy a ticket, like one single ticket, you're, that's the biggest self snitch that you're a coward. You're afraid of leaving the house by yourself. You can't enjoy something without having someone else there to go, yeah, it's all right, it's cool. You're not a loser for liking something. Hey man, if you can't go to something by yourself, you're either you're either a fucking loser or you're quite a straight smart woman. All right, this doesn't really apply to women. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. This argument really only applies to adult men. All right, and that's my privilege. Okay, that's my right. 
That's the hard-earned privilege that I benefit from a bunch of animal men being dangerous motherfuckers. I get to enjoy the benefit of that, and the benefit of that, of that is, is, oh, I'm going to go out at night by myself. That's my privilege, and I will enjoy it. It's not right. Everyone should be able to have it, but until everyone can do it, I'm going to live it up, baby. Check me out. It's 11 p.m. I think I'll go for a walk in Frankston. No dog. <laughs> <laughs> For real, you should go to shit by yourself. Women, if you're listening, during the day. Everyone else, whatever time you want. Go to go to events by yourself. I always get uh, messages every time I do a show. I was, oh, I want to get tickets, but I don't. I don't know if I should bring anyone, and, and I don't. I don't really want to go by myself. Go by yourself. No one even knows that you're by yourself either. Mm -hmm. I think, honestly, maybe music especially. Uh, Shit, going to shit by yourself is so good. Whenever I've gone to gone to like a comic convention, which I used to go, I haven't gone for years, but whenever I went, whenever I went, went with someone, even if they loved the convention as well and they loved the nerdy shit that I was into, I would enjoy it much less because I would have to worry about how much we're walking, someone else needs to eat, someone else needs to use the bathroom. When, it, when you go to like a, a thing that goes for hours and you're by yourself, art gallery, convention, big music show, comedy, whatever. You don't have to, f you can be really selfish and it's fucking awesome. And that can mean staying there and walking around for six hours. That could mean staying there for 40 minutes and going home. You know, that's another thing. So often I've gone to something with someone else and been like, I'm sick of it. I want to leave, but they don't. Or they'll be like, oh, I wanted to leave, but you look like you were having fun. Fuck, we should have both left. <laughs> um, that said though, I uh, will put a little caveat. If you are coming to my show, you should bring seven people. Um, that's actually the best way to enjoy the shows. Keelan's brought seven people to shows before, and how much better is it? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. A lot better. So, so actually, I would say that Lewis Spears shows, you don't have to bring seven people, but it would be great if you brought ten. It is actually a lot of fun to bring your whole family, like your mom and your yep. mother-in-law and your sister and your brother and your brother's. Yep girlfriend and your sister's huh? partner yeah yeah absolutely but you know oh you know it's actually even better than that if if you you buy t-shirts for them after <laughs> yeah. like everyone gets a t-shirt and and everyone buys a poster and then and then on the way home just to fucking top off the night you sign grandma mama everyone to <laughs> patreon just on the way home like that's that's really a that's a really good night out is bringing 15 family members cousins just buy them a ticket and invite them all right. If they don't come, they don't come. The point is you've bought 15 tickets. You've done your part. You're a good person. Uh, and then you buy merch for everyone afterwards and then sign everyone up to Patreon. That's the way to do it, that, I think. That does remind me of this year my my sister and my mum came to a show and we let them in for free. What? And then at the end of the show, my sister bought two T-shirts because she That's felt better. so much guilt. That's better. That's right. And you know what? Job's not done. All right, buy two more or else you'll feel guilty. <laughs> no, that is that is very sweet. Good on her. Um, you know what? Actually, one time though, uh, I, think la I think it was like the last time I did Ballarat or Geelong, a group of... 11 boys showed up like wow. just just the fucking boys a night out they every single one of them bought the same t-shirt <laughs> i was buzzing like, this was years ago i was like oh my god i've made so much fucking money <laughs> out of this friend like 11 of them bought tickets and 11 of them bought t-shirts i was like what is going on this is awesome i was like i'll see you boys next year they didn't come back oh. they loved it though <laughs> Actually, I think I didn't go back. I think I hadn't, hadn't done a regional show since then. That was so long ago. But that was fucking, that was really cool. Taking a photo with all of them. I was like, oh my God, it, look, it looked like a cult, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, that's that's enough about the best band in the world, Coldplay. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, the, the new Disney and Marvel films that are coming out. Well, that's the same thing. They're both Disney films. They're all flopping. They're all doing terribly. And I'm loving it. I'm, I'm loving it, especially the Marvel films. Dude, Marvel, it's over. I think that it's, I think that some trends are just, well, it's not even a trend. I feel like after Avengers Endgame, they did it. That was a great place to call it. But executives and investors were like, more, more, more. And now we've got movies like the Marvels. Who is that? 
Who the, f like, it's like Captain Marvel and then two other chicks that I feel like they're making it, they're really pressuring me to know who these characters are. And it's like, I'm not going to watch a Disney Plus TV show to understand who a character is and their backstory. Not going to do it. Don't care. All right. I, I remember the last Marvel movie I watched was the newest Doctor Strange one. And do you know how it started? It started how, and I found this out in retrospect, the movie started how one of their TV series ended. That's how they started a film. I hadn't watched it. I was like, what the fuck is happening? It was like the WandaVision show. The whole movie was like, this happened on a six episode fucking Disney Plus TV series you have not watched. And here are the repercussions. I don't care. They tried to recap it. And then and then I think we watched like the latest Gardens of the Galaxy film. And they also had like 15 minutes of the show was the director fucking recapping shit he had nothing to do with that happened on Disney Plus shows or other Marvel movies. I am so sick of the cinematic universe. It was cool. It was cool when you could keep up with it. But now even fucking Spider-Man has its own cinematic universe that is kind of linked into Marvel, but kind of isn't. I'm over it. I can't deal with it anymore. I quit. Keeping up with Marvel films is a full-time job. And Star Wars. Don't care. I am I am completely checked out of Star Wars. I don't care. I think the, the next Star Wars film that comes out, I probably won't even see it, to be honest. They blew it. That new trilogy sucked. And then the TV series they put out, I was really excited for the Obi-Wan one. It sucked. I was loving the... The fucking man, I was loving the Mandalorian. Season two came in. They were like, "Hey, what about this character?" I was like, "Don't! I'm not watching another TV series. No. Hey, what about Boba Fett? Do you want to watch? No." And then they made a Boba Fett one, and I was actually excited for that. But then apparently the whole fucking thing is like a Mandalorian season three kinda. No, I'm not keeping up with it. I refuse. Somehow Palpatine has returned. I know how, because you have shit writers who don't plan their shit out. But now it's a, it's like affecting Disney movies as well. Disney have come out with a with a new what's their new one even called? I just realized that I haven't even seen an ad for it. Wish. Wish. Yeah, it sounds like it, they got it off Wish, the film. Like I, I do you know what it's about? Isn't that bad? I feel like every Disney film for a while there, before Marvel and Star Wars, like you knew everything about the plot before the movie came out. I haven't heard anything about this or the the last five. If I go off my memory, Wish is this one. I just found out the title now to Keelan. The one before that was... Uh, was uh, Elemental. The What? Elemental? Yeah. Hadn't heard of that. I think so. That was the one with the... Oh, maybe I'm confusing Pixar, I don't know, but the, like, fire and water character. Oh, I've seen those images on Twitter. Yeah, I didn't know the name of that. Before then, there was the there was the black main character. Uh, Soul. Uh, Soul. That's a good one. I like that one. I have heard good things about that one, but I, I, but I didn't see it. I feel like they've... Uh, and next year, they're releasing um, Inside my, the Mind one of all the emotions... Number two. In, is it called Inside? Yeah. Inside two. That movie was all right, but I kind of, I just, yeah, I kind of forgot mm. all about it. Like I just deleted it from my brain. And Despicable Me 4, not that that's a What for? Disney, Despicable Me. Not I, that that's Disney, but. No, I like, that's a good one. Yeah. I do like that. <laughs> yeah. Steve Carell slaps. But yeah, I, I think the, that uh, Disney has completely just oversaturated uh Everything they're making too much stuff. I think even even the CEO of Disney said this. They're like, we're making way too much shit. Um, and and yeah, I mean, are you guys seeing these films? I don't I don't think anybody is. It's really interesting that all of these films, like the that are supposed to be the blockbuster, Indiana Jones failed. Um, like the most one of the most. Ex why was Indiana Jones like one of the most expensive films ever made? Why did that happen? Um, all these recent Disney ones failed. The Star Wars ones made a lot of money, obviously, but they're getting forgotten about really quickly. And I feel like they're kind of, I think the, the, the recent Star Wars films, they 
burned a lot of goodwill. I think they completely burned a lot of the goodwill at the altar. And even people who weren't Star Wars fans that like checked out the films, they were like, yeah, they were all right. Like it didn't create new hardcore fans the way that the other films did. Um, and it, But it's really interesting that these films are like failing either commercially a lot of the time or critically even when they do make money. But it's all of these other films that you would think on paper would kind of do okay uh, are crushing right now. Like uh, uh, the new Christopher Nolan film made almost a billion. The Barbie film made a billion, I think. Um, yeah, like a three and a half hour movie documentary is just crushing it right now. Things like that uh, are doing really well. Um, the Racka Racka Boys film making just printing money. They're going on Netflix this Friday, by the way. By the time this episode comes out, uh, watch Talk To Me. Uh, on Netflix because we want to have a really good first week with the boys. I'm having a movie night on Friday. Uh, I'm going to watch it. It's going to be so sick. Uh, I'm watching it again. It's actually a brilliant film, uh, but we want to give the boys a good first Netflix uh, week. Um, but yeah, it's just really interesting watching these previously like pretty much undefeatable movie Titan companies putting out stuff that just works, not working. I think the the cooking cutter formula is is um, drying up. I think it's also just like there's so much stuff to compete with now. Like really, Disney has to compete with me and music and live events and YouTube and all these other different forms of entertainment where someone will be like, yeah, why would I watch a movie when I can see it summarized on TikTok in 60 seconds or just watch the YouTube review of it? and then decide if I want to see it or feel like I've already watched it because I got the plot summarized for me on a Wikipedia article, like all that shit. Um, uh, plus there's just more movies than there ever have been before. And also there's a bunch of movies on streaming services. I watched a phenomenal movie on my laptop the other night. It was, uh, it just came out on Netflix. It was a Western. It was called Organ Trail. Amazing. Never heard of it. Don't know the director, don't know any of the actors. I saw the picture of it. It just came out. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll watch like a shitty Western. It was amazing. Super engaging story. Beautiful cinematography. In unbelievably violent and such a cool story. And I was like, oh, that was awesome. That And, and I know that, that I enjoyed that sitting in bed watching it on my laptop way more than I would have going out to the cinema and watching, I don't know, anything that's currently playing. I do really want to see Napoleon though. I am excited for that. People are saying it's terrible or that it's historically inaccurate. I don't give a fuck. All right. There are all these history nerds that are super upset because Napoleon kind of in real life conquered Egypt, but they skip over that in the film. And the way that the director decided to show him conquering Egypt was shooting a cannon <laughs> at the pyramids. That's awesome. I want to see that. That's cool. Everyone's seeing that and going, oh, this is horrible. This isn't how it really happened. I don't give a fuck. I want to see the pyramids get blown up by a cannon. That's cool. You know what is annoying though? The one gripe I have with that film, I haven't seen it yet, but the one thing that does annoy me is in real life, Napoleon was much, much, much younger than his uh, girl that he was obsessed with, who was much older. But in the film... Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is the age that the woman would be uh, and the woman is much younger. So I think that that would have been so much cooler to have like a much younger guy play Napoleon and a much older guy, girl play, or a trans guy play, a uh, trans girl play um, the woman. And I also, uh, I feel like they didn't include, obviously Napoleon did a bunch of really cool things, conquered the world, you know, caused revolutions, got exiled a couple of times and escaped from it. But I think the 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 thing that, that really makes me think, wow, Napoleon was a crazy motherfucker. The really the thing that really sticks out in my mind that he did is that he sent a letter to his girlfriend. He said, I'm coming home in three days, don't wash. That's a real letter. Ew. He loves sticky pussy. Ew. Napoleon loved going down on sticky pussy. And let's look. Let's, let's really think about this for a minute, okay? Even fellas, think about this. If you didn't wash for three days down there, 
it'd be quite swampy, very stenchy, okay? It'd be musky. Now imagine that you lived hundreds of years ago. That's going to be foul. That's going to be another level of musk. Think about hundreds of years ago, how stinky your pussy would be. You could die. I feel like if a woman didn't wash for three days, back then she could die of an infection just because of how dirty everything else was and how clean were they getting when they did wash, you know? You'd think not as clean as we're getting with all of our fancy soaps and high-pressure water and clean water. How clean was she getting when she did wash? Probably a little bit stinky, you know? That's so, that's so, I think that's so funny that Napoleon, like it doesn't matter, sometimes it doesn't matter how great you become, you just become known for something else. This man, he conquered the world and the only thing I'm seeing about him on TikTok is his love for stinky vagina. <laughs> That's like, oh, man, that's like Usain Bolt. Like, oh, he's the fastest man alive. Yeah, but did you know he likes toes? That's what he's really famous for. That's incredible. So I'm, I am excited for Napoleon. I'm going to see that in cinema as well. Um, anyway, speaking of strange sexual habits, uh, Josh Giddy is in trouble, okay? All I've been seeing online is Josh Giddy the basketball player, he's Australian and he's gotten in trouble. There's a huge controversy around him because allegedly he uh, has been having sexual relations with an underage girl is the allegation, okay? He is, uh, how old is he now? Um, he's a, he's 21 right now, okay? This happened when he was 19 is the allegation. Uh, he is uh, one of the only Australians in the NBA He's uh, one of our best prospects ever. He just signed a contract with the NBA that's worth $41 million. He's 21. He's from Australia. Isn't that unbelievable? And and that really makes us look bad. Like, wh like white Australians get one guy into the NBA and immediately he's messaging underage girls. <laughs> It's like, come on, dude. We'd expect that of our Minecraft YouTubers, not our basketballers, you know? Right, so the allegations uh, of the 21-year-old having an inappropriate relationship with a minor first arose via an anonymous social media post last Thursday that has since been deleted. The Newport Beach Police Department is aware of information being circulated online involving an alleged relationship between professional basketball player Josh Giddy and a female minor. So the cops are looking at it. That doesn't mean that, they, he, that he's definitely done it or he's going to get arrested or anything like that, but they are looking at it, as they should be when stuff like this um, comes out. And uh, so now uh, we're getting to... Let me just scroll down here into the article. Okay, so it's just so... I've watched a lot of the uh, um, interviews and stuff with him, and he just looks so baffled that he's being interviewed at all, right? Like if they were asking him about what he had for lunch, I think he'd be freaking out. Could you imagine go going from Australia where you're in the NBL? You're like, kind, you're good at, you're really good at in the NBL, but you're in the NBL. Like no one cares. All right. You're lucky to fill a stadium. It's just like a bunch of uh, fathers and their kids who who can't afford to go to America to watch the real thing in the NBA, all right? It's a bunch of white people playing basketball. You know, you might as well be, be watching uh, the WNBA. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, he's made it to the NBA and he's just been landed in this whole other environment where he's doing press conferences, where he's world famous. He's gone from being broke to signing a $40 million deal and, and, and the first thing that happens to him that gets his name in everyone's mouth is allegations that he's having sex with a child. I don't know what the fuck would be... If, if this is not true, God, I feel sorry for him. If it is true, yeah, you know. Um, so he got asked about it and he goes, I understand the question, obviously, but there's no further comment right now. Um, now, basically what we're getting to is it looks like 
And there hasn't really been um, a uh, definitive answer on this, but it's looking like at the moment it was completely consensual and completely legal and he was much younger when it started. It looks like he was 19 and the girl was 17 is what it's looking like. Uh, it, it might change by the time this episode comes out. But 17 and 19, it's not great, but it is legal. And, you know, is he a young 19? Is she an old 17, like close to 18, him close to 18? You know, they could both be close to 18. Who knows? It's like, it's not that bad um, if that's what it is. Uh, and if it is obviously consensual and everything, it's really not an issue at all. I mean, it's two teenagers. Um, so you got to feel sorry for the guy. And the person that, po that posted the original tweet has deleted it. And the police and investigators and stuff have, have gone to the girl and her family. They're not cooperating, uh, meaning they don't want him charged, meaning it looks like it was very consensual. I mean, all of the photos that were posted, um, it looks like it's the girl taking selfies and stuff. And also he is posing for the camera too. So it doesn't look like he knows he's doing something wrong and he's trying to keep it a secret. And it doesn't look like she's being coerced or forced into anything. anything. It looks like both of them think it's pretty fucking normal, um, which doesn't always mean that it is, but it, it looks like this poor kid has just been wrapped up into this fucking pedophilia accusation. Like all I've seen on, on my TikTok is Josh Giddy trending for the last seven days. And it's just jokes about him having sex with kids. It's not good. I feel sorry for the guy. If it's not true, I really do feel sorry for him. He uh, he was the ambassador for Wheat Bix. They just dropped him. Yeah. And that's that sucks. I really do. I wish there was like, I wish it became the norm for because obviously if, if, you're, if you become the face of a company or if, or if you pay someone to be the face of your company and they, and they get horrible accusations, whether or not those things are true, they can't be the face of the company. But I just wish that it became normal for brands to come out and say, we've decided to put a pause on it. I wish that that became normal for while this thing is happening and while this is being investigated, we've decided to pause our ambassadorship with Josh Giddy, and then they wait a couple months and then they, they unpause and that can mean he's dropped or it's continued because it's looking like the guy hasn't done anything wrong at all, even according to the girl and the girl's family. Again, that might change by the time this comes out, but it's looking pretty solid but he loses all of this stuff out of an allegation that's made against him by seem, seems like not this girl, just a stranger, a friend of the girl, someone who hates Josh, who knows what their motivations are. They're anonymous. They've since deleted it. Maybe because they're worried about getting sued or whatever. And this kid start of his career gets tainted by these allegations. And it's, it's horrible, man. I really feel sorry for this guy. Um, and yeah, it just sucks. So Sanitarium moved to explain why images of the Aussie star were removed from all posts on Monday night. We know how hard negative social media comments can be for anyone, especially for young athletes. We removed promotional asset assets featuring Josh from our own channels out of, a, out of a desire to minimize opportunities for negative commentary towards Josh while the NBA is looking into the current situation. Um, it was not a precursor to any decisions on Josh's contract as a Wheat Bix ambassador. Oh, great. So they've done exactly what I said. This is good. We are still in contact with Josh's management team and are waiting on the facts surrounding this matter. I love that. That's so good. Go Wheat Bix. That's exactly how you should handle it. I love that. I assumed here. I Man, I, I'm so, I feel so happy about being wrong. That's really good. I really hope that we see more of that. I really just feel like this, especially with social media and, and you know, especially as AI gets better and better and better, there's going to be so much fake shit out there uh, of just heinous acts committed by celebrities and shit like that. I mean, even I'm, I'm seeing on YouTube now all the time and it's a very funny joke and I have done it myself of like someone will make a video about some, someone else, a famous person, and then they'll use the AI cloning voice to, you know, abuse the YouTuber in their voice, right? And it's like, it's, it sounds very fake now, but it's getting better. Everyone I see, they're getting better and better and better. I mean, I cloned the Queen's voice. 
for my show and Prince Philip as well. And it, it at points it sounded quite real. And it's like, it's just going to get worse and worse. And I really do feel like brands are just going to have to start being doing exactly this of like, while this is under investigation, we're going to put a pause on these posts. And then when it comes out, I just hope that they don't drop him after it because they, they could, you know, they could just go, ah, oh, we don't really want to be involved with the noise. Um, but I do love seeing brands stick by people who have controversy but haven't done anything wrong because very, very often controversy doesn't mean anything's been... I mean, you look at when I got protested, right? I got protested. I was like, fuck, I'm so worried about my show getting cancelled. Not because I've done the wrong thing here. I was definitely in the right. I was just worried about the venue not wanting to deal with the noise and 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 having to put on extra staff and to deal with the fucking controversy, it's annoying for the business and it's not as beneficial for them as, as it is for me. But they stuck by me, so I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, so, yeah, I hope... Uh, I hope that this remains true and I hope it remains fine because I, I, I just hate to see, yeah, a 21-year-old lose everything. Could you imagine how terrified he would be? Because if he loses the NBA contract, like I've thought about this, I've said this on my podcast, like in a way, or I don't know if I've said it here, but I've definitely thought it a lot. It was horrible for me to get so sick for so long and it was a, a terrible thing for me to go through. And I still am recovering from like the, the mental aspect of that. But something that's really ha helping me with the, 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 cause you know, you can feel like I wasted so much time and I lost so many opportunities and so many things went wrong and this and that. But I'm like, man, thank fuck it happened when I was in Australia. Like, thank God I got this sick when I was here because if I was, because I was, you know, thinking, oh man, if COVID didn't happen, I would have moved to the States and I'd probably be doing heaps better than I am now. And that is true. But you know what? If I moved to the States before COVID happened, I would have had to come back. I would have lost heaps of money, heaps of opportunities. I would have had to break my lease. I would have lost all that money. I would have probably lost my visa because they would have gotten rid of it because I wouldn't have been able to go there for two years. Uh, and then even if, the, even if, you know, that didn't, even if I didn't get, uh, have my surgeries here and now, if I moved to America and COVID didn't happen, I still would have gotten sick and I still would have needed these surgeries and I still would have been unable to make any money. And then instead of making less money and getting less views like I have been for the last few years, I would have gotten deported. And then once you get deported, you can't come back. That's it. You know, you, you said you were going to come here to work and make this amount of money, you didn't fulfill those obligations, get out of here, you're a useless immigrant. We only want immigrants who can make money who then pay tax. That's it, that would have been it, I would have been fucked. So in a way, I'm very grateful that I got sick here because, you know, what if, if I lose everything, what's gonna happen? Oh, I might have to move into my parents' house. That's the worst thing that can happen to me right now. If I go over there and I lose everything, I get fucking deported. <laughs> it's so much worse. So I'd be freaking out if I were him like, oh my God, if I lose my NBA contract, I'm going to hope. I'm 21. I'm an athlete. You're fucked. That's it. You're in the NBL forever. So yeah, I hope it's, I hope that he'll be all right. And I really, I really do hope that um, this all kind of goes away, but fuck, it's such a, uh, an awful thing to see happen as such a young guy. And obviously, you know, it's it's something that you want to happen to people who really did that shit. Like you, it's such a hard balance to, to, to fix because often uh, victims don't come forward and when they do, nothing happens. The police don't do anything or there's not enough evidence or it, it just turns into a he said, she said. And, and when it is, when it really is, he said, she said, and the guy actually did do it or the girl actually did do it, you can't convict because it's because it's like oh he said he said he didn't do it and she said she did do it and you know if there's no footage if there's no other evidence if it's just that and there's no other witnesses then you can't convict because not enough and then the guy who actually did it goes away and there's no real way to beat that system or improve it that I can see um, because you know you can't prove without a shadow of a doubt that no one is lying you know that goes for him and her. Um, and that's a shame because, it, and, and, and I, and I hate seeing this happen because it makes, it puts that, that doubt into everyone's head that when the real one 
comes out and when the real when the real thing because that's the thing like this this girl she obviously doesn't want anything to do with it she's happy it seems at this point at least you know i am assuming um but at this point the police are not inve investigating none of the brands are dropping in the 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 family have obviously been contacted they're not pressing charges so it would seem that it was completely consensual and above board and legal obviously because even if the um family didn't want to press charges if it was illegal the cops will get involved it doesn't matter um and i feel like when this these things happen when it's like an an a false allegation seemingly made by a fucking stranger who wasn't involved at all because it's just snapchat screenshots that this girl has taken and sent to her friends probably so it might be just some angry bitter friend that either wants to hurt josh giddy or this girl has put it out um, when stuff like that happens, it makes, it puts that doubt into everyone's head when the allegations that are true comes out of like, oh yeah, but how true is this? This is probably just like the Josh Giddy situation. That was bullshit. And this looks like that. Cause when it is at the allegation phase, it looks like that. They look the same. It's only once the investigation happens, that's when it starts to look different and you find out what's true and what's not. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's such a, it's such a shame to see this this stuff happen, but um, I don't know. I, I hope he's all right, and I hope she's all right as well. Because what an awful thing for her to go through. Even if it if it's if if nothing happened between them or nothing wrong happened between them, what a horrible thing for this girl to have to fucking deal with. You know, she probably has family members coming to her and trying to comfort her. In journalists and investigators knocking on her door, and and you know trying to find out if something horrible happened to her when really it seems like they just had like a good time together. How awful. And she gets her name and her face plastered everywhere. She's just a, an underage girl at the time. Uh, it's, it's gross. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that's probably that's probably the show, isn't it? We'll, we'll continue on uh, on Patreon. We've got a bit more stuff to talk about over on Patreon. If you want to listen to that, uh, it'll be up right now. Uh, please do support the show. It really, really does help, especially as we are ramping back up with production and everything. I am announcing my tour next week. I want to see you there. Uh, the shows are going to start in January in Perth. I will say that. That is... Uh, locked in and confirmed and ready to go so yeah really really exciting stuff i can't wait to get on stage i got on stage uh last week and and did like quite a long set bunch of new material i man i loved it um and it was so easy i feel good i can't wait um and i'll talk to you guys next sunday or right now on patreon i hope you have a shit one bye